Hi, my name is Osama Fatim. I am an Egyptian uh, citizen who lived in the United States for 16 years. My studies started in Egypt, of course, in the College of College de la Sainte Famille, Jesuit school here in Egypt. And after that, I went to Faculty of Commerce, Foreign Trade, uh, Hillwell University, and I worked as an accountant for one day and decided that this is not what I want to do in my life. So I went to start to, well, to be a performant as an actor uh, in the Centre Culturel Francais, where I acted in one piece, which was, you know, a comic one. My family is middle class. My father is a professor of psychology, one of the pioneers, Dr. Lotfi Fatim, and my mother, uh, was an Arabic teacher, Mrs. Amalo Weiss. Uh, my grandpa for my mother is Dr. Saida Weiss, who was one of the pioneers as well in the sociology field. And all this built into my character, personality, and background. My family has religious roots. My my great-grandfather was a sheikh in Al-Azhar. I never met him, unfortunately, but he got his PhD, or Al-Alamiya, in 1904. This is me in brief. I spent 16 years in the US, but the main thing that took me there was my work at Al-Ahram. I was offered a job there because of my work. And this was um, the most, the richest time in my life where I, st well, I worked in the Egyptian society up and high, down and low, and I've seen it all to a great extent for that time. And it was a builder of character as well. Great experience to be a journalist, which helped me survive after that in the United States, where I had to do many things that I wrote about before, such as working minor jobs while studying, uh, doing uh, different activities uh, using my hands. Uh, all these things that I wrote about, I had to experience later in life. Regarding my background, among the main factors in my background is the Jesuit school. I'm so grateful for what they have done for me and to me. Uh, they created, they, they helped creating to a great extent who I am today. Due to the development that occurred in Egypt towards more religious uh, extremism that I've noticed in daily life to nowadays, well this wasn't the case when I grew up, where I grew up. We didn't understand at all the difference between a Muslim and a Christian till much later in life. We were friends. We were uncaring at all, not caring about whatsoever. What's your religion? What do you do? And what what you don't do towards God? And what you should uh, be doing or not be doing according to your religion? It's not the case at all. It is basically we were friends in the religion. Um, session that we had, we just switched classes. Muslims went to one class and Christians went to another and the teacher taught. And then we returned back to our places uh, where, you know, continue our uh, school day like normal. So literally I couldn't feel any difference between I left uh, between Muslims and Christians because I left my friends from section A to section B and returned back to my friends in section A after the course or the session has ended. Uh, this uh, to a great extent made uh, my life much easier towards not being discriminative, not understanding what discrimination is till much later in life. Another thing I, th I thought about much later in life is ethnicity. We are all Egyptians. We were Egyptians. We still are. 
but who came from where, from which roots, um, didn't matter much. But eventually when we grew up, we knew, oh, that friend of mine has Armenian roots, or that friend of mine has Greek roots, so what? He's still my friend. In the school, uh, in the College de la Symphony, plus teaching, they built character. We were uh, distinguished to a great extent due to this upbringing by strong teachers who made things, uh, made us understand what's right and wrong. Of course, we were not always complying, but we knew what was right and what was wrong all the time. We were always reminded by that. So, learning French, learning English, and of course Arabic, we, we, we learned Arabic better than most of the students in Arabic schools, by the way, uh, opened horizons for all of us. Uh, we read in everything and all the subjects. They were, to a great extent, uh, we had to read it for studying, but also a curiosity of the youngsters curiosity of the young ones uh, played an important role as well. So with that um, background, I threw myself into journalism later in life with well equipped, I must tell, I must say, because it had been, well, I've already had the melange or the mixture of a very rich background. Well, uh, after finishing high school, I went to Faculty of Commerce in Helwan University. My studies were in English. And in there, I understood a little bit about how the economy works, how uh, the economic studies started, and what is to be done with public finances, with foreign trade, and so on and so forth regarding the various businesses, business subjects. Uh, even though I didn't work as an accountant or in a business person after I graduated, this gave me a little bit of understanding to what should be an economy, how it should happen, why it should happen the way it does, and so on and so forth. When I studied, when I studied actually journalism later in life, but when I worked as a journalist, uh, as a reporter for Al Aram Ibdo, uh, that was also in the background. That was a little bit understood uh, what is, how it should be done. I graduated from Faculty of Commerce with an accounting degree, but I always had the uh, passion for acting. But of course, you know, I wasn't that equipped to be an actor, but still, I was, you know, watched a lot of movies if you want. I worked as an accountant for one day and decided that this is the last thing I want to do in my life. So in the Centre Culturel Francais, I went and played with a bunch of amateurs, passionate people about acting as well. And actually, a few of them continued in the career. But we played a, a subtitled play, if you want, where the uh, French or the Belge played, uh, spoke in Arabic, and the Arabs or the Egyptians spoke in French. It was called Aventure de Goha. And while doing that, I basically discovered that, hey, I, 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 I have other energies to uh, utilize in that subject, but I didn't pursue that till much later in life as well. And I worked as a journalist instead. And this passion for art continued with me between the background of understanding classical music early in life, uh, appreciating a good piece of art, and eventually developing a critical view about the arts or the things that I read or the books or the plays, as well as philosophy and history. In 1999 and after working uh, in the Ahram Ibdo for about seven years, I was offered a 
job in Bates College as a writer in residence in the Multicultural Center. They intended to get to know the Middle East better, at least in that college. So I was offered to teach Arabic language for uh, foreigners. So I purchased a course that I said, taught to a few students there. And in the same time, due to my work and activity as a journalist, I was asked to give lectures, public lectures for the forums in the, in the college itself uh, about my work. So mainly I spoke about the environment, spoke a little bit about the Middle Eastern conflict and uh, a few other subjects that I was interested in and wrote about. Al Aram unfortunately did not accept that I go, so I had to resign, which I did then, figuring that hey, after six months I can, can return, uh, intending to you know get my job back. While there, I was first of all the cultural shock was huge due to the weather mainly. Maine is nearest to Canada, and it was really for the first time I saw the snow. In Egypt, we don't see snow. So, we, uh, I stayed there for six months, and while there, I was offered a scholarship in New Orleans, Louisiana, in Tulane University, uh, through my co-workers and staff in Bates College. They told me, well, seems that you can get a PhD, or, you know, just as good as us, as a teacher, so, hey, why don't you do a PhD to get the credentials and, you know, get to know better the American way of teaching and studying. I figured, hey, why not? That's even better offer than writer-in-residence. While, as, as a writer-in-residence, I was uh, interviewed a few times by the radio in Maine, as well as uh, wrote in their publications about various subjects, especially discrimination and racism. That was, well, expanding in Maine, unfortunately, at that time. And I think they've done a good job uh, handling the situations in many uh, situations that occurred uh, towards people of color and some students even of color that, have, uh, that has been attacked or abused due to their color. So, after my six months in Bates, in Maine, I returned I went down to Louisiana and to Tulane University to study uh, for my PhD in political science. And while there, I was shocked by the amount of poverty that I saw in Louisiana, especially among African Americans, black people. Uh, the the South, in general, in the United States is a bit discriminatory towards everyone who is not white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And I imagine that still is the case nowadays. It, they were not able to change that much in the South. And Louisiana, well, the main city there is New Orleans. And it was a very interesting city uh, where you can see extreme wealth next to extreme poverty and at the same time uh, seeing how everybody is struggling to just survive. In my course of studies I wrote a lot of things, I got a few awards uh, in my um, writing in French of course was an easy thing as well as uh, taking a few writers um, prizes among the students, the undergrads and the grads of uh, the university. And they are very active in that field, by the way, uh, which is something I wish to see in Egyptian universities, but they make a lot of um, competitions so that students can compete, find their own voices by writing or singing or increasing the artistic level in their um, career. While I was there, 9-11 occurred, and it was the first day of uh, one of the semesters I was in, and I was living the American life, meaning I was managing a hotel in the evening and in the same time studying in the morning. 
so my supervisor, the general manager of the hotel, advised me strongly to, on 9-11 evening, to change my name tag. So, in order not to look as an Osama, especially that almost everyone knew right away that it's probably Osama bin Laden who did it. And I did that for a few days. And then I continued, or returned back to my name tag, and continued my life in New Orleans as it was. The uh, main hassle was in uh, the airports. But in general, people couldn't tell my name in the first place. I mean, they couldn't pronounce any Arabic names easily. And, but after 9-11, everybody knew my name somehow. Once this has been uh, I was very near uh, in my um, PhD studies when Katrina occurred. Hurricane Katrina, the storm, that destroyed New Orleans completely. And I was lucky to be alive. The city was unlivable. Could not live there for quite a few months. And still now, when I returned to visit a few years later, it was a little bit... Uh, nostalgic and I saw the the uh, effects of the storm on the houses including the house I lived in and uh, the stores as well as the French Quarter which is a beautiful piece of art uh, like downtown Cairo here for example in their own different level of course because here it's Cairo is much a bigger city than New Orleans And I had friends in Wisconsin who told me, hey, since you're alive, come if you make it alive. And I took them apart. I was well received in Wisconsin, stayed there with the intention of returning to New Orleans in a month or two, thinking that it was going to be an easy return. But while there it was quite easy, quite easily detected that, hey, New Orleans will not be the same, studies will not be the same, university will not be the same, so I decided to stay in Wisconsin. I stayed there, my first job there was, I mean, I stopped studying, but I worked in a bank till I became a manager there, and then a couple of years later, I worked in an insurance company, and I stayed there for about 10 years. In these 10 years, I could tell exactly how do the, well, Midwest, at least, of the United States think. Um, they are receptive to other, but not that much. They are not racist, but not completely accepting. And at the same time, they are hardworking. The, uh, the machine, if you want. Uh, you work, you don't have pleasure that much and basically you work as much as you can to just make it and make it well i must say so in these 10 years i consolidated all my experience i could tell that there was a uh, rejection to my existence there to my being there but not to the point of breaking the law or being abusive mm, the people in the midwest mainly white they are not um, they're not bad people at all, but at the same time, they are very limited in their knowledge about the rest of the world. And that is the case with almost all U.S. citizens. Going to the United States or traveling there had in the background, in the back of my mind, that the concept of bridge makers, that in the beginning, the U.S. Uh, picture to us 
was unclear to a great extent, only known as the ally of Israel, uh, the ally of whatever is bad in our political arena, if you want. They are against us. Going there, I discovered that, no, they are not against us, they just don't understand us. And while in Wisconsin, of course my name brought, as Osama, brought a lot of discussions from people who don't know anything about the Middle East or the conflict there or the reason for it or the religious background. Even after 9-11, they still were not able to understand what exactly we are, um, what do we stand for, what do we want, what is our uh, side of the case of the Palestinian or the Middle Eastern conflict. And while there, all this has been uh, elaborated in discussions with a lot of people, being interviewed in the radio a few times, uh, basically getting the uh, Arab point out. And unfortunately, they are, we are, they are so overwhelmed by the regular mainstream media, which everybody calls really those who understand there, or the intellects if you want, uh, call it disinformation. So they don't know anything about us. They don't want to know anything about us, uh, unless it's something that hurts them or comes to their near interest. Our politicians and theirs uh, are trying to close that gap unsuccessful so far and I hope that this changes. The uh, concept of bridge maker is very easy. We are, we have been in the American, as Arabs and Egyptians, we have been in the American society for a very long time. A lot of us have achieved a lot there, uh, but this didn't uh, translate into a closing of the cultural gap or the political one. This is exactly where I decided that, hey, maybe time to return to see it from their point of view here. I explained our point of view there as much as I could. And at the same time, uh, they are still not understood here completely correctly. So, hey, the gap is still big uh, and there's a lot of work to be done with today's word communication and instant information all over the world, it is not going to be as difficult as it was before, but it has to, we have to be really open-minded and as well as they do. I am Osama Lotfi Fotin, the son of Dr. Lotfi Fotin, the grandson of Dr. Saeed Awais. I come from a very long line of Egyptians who have been bridge makers between the West and the East for a very long time. Generations after generations, we have been doing that and we will continue doing that. In brief, I am the son of Egypt.